Hello, hello. I'm David, and this is the Fine Fine Ample Game A8. And this is not so much a review. This is a tutorial, an audio tutorial for all of my podcast friends who show up on podcasts with me from time to time. This is a way to make your audio sound better. Why do you need to make your audio sound better, you might ask? One reason is if uh, if my audio, for instance, sounds great and your audio sounds garbage, then you're not going to sound like you know what you're talking about. And people are going to assume that I know what I'm talking about and you don't. That is a very wrong assumption. And I don't want people to make assumptions like that. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I like to surround myself with people who are smarter than me or better than I am in some way. And uh, that way I can, I can improve. So there's that. The second reason is that people don't listen to podcasts or videos with bad audio. They just won't watch. They will forgive bad video much faster than they will forgive bad audio. Bad audio is the kiss of death for video, and it's a bigger kiss of death for audio. Your audio has to be good or else uh, the audience will never grow where it needs to grow. And I would like the audience to grow. I'm not trying very hard to grow the audience, but I want to remove any barriers to growing the audience as well. And so for that reason, I want the people on the show to put their best voice forward. And so I want to make this tutorial so that you can use your microphones better. Okay, the first thing that you need to use your microphones better is a better microphone. If you're using the microphone that is uh, part of your laptop, it is a bad microphone just by definition. It is not very good. In fact, it is very bad. I, I don't care if you listen back to it and you think it sounds okay. It's a very bad microphone. You want to use an external microphone. All right. So that's the first thing. A lot of people will say, yeah, but I'm just doing this for, you know, an occasional diversion. I'm not serious about it. I understand that. But it's, it's still important, even if you only do it on occasion, to make your audio as good as you can. So uh, the first thing you need to do if you don't have a decent external microphone is to buy one. This cannot be done for free. You need a mic. However, it can be done for cheap. You can do it for under $50 and get a really good mic. This microphone costs anywhere between $46 and $49, depending on the color you get, depending on the day that you get it. It's all a part of the Amazon algorithm. And so if you like the sound of this mic, you can get this mic for under $50. That is in the territory of what I consider garbage mic territory. And this garbage mic is pretty good. There's one more piece of hardware that you need to know about and you need to obtain. You can get it for under $20. You can get it between $10 and $20. Uh, you know, they go dirt cheap. The one that you see in this video, it costs $130. It's kind of worth it. You should never buy it. Now, I would never recommend uh, this mic arm because most people don't know what a mic arm is or what it's used for. They just wouldn't understand. Uh, even if I explained it to them, what you get for th that money. So what I'm going to recommend is that you get a cheap mic arm. And let me show you what that is real quick. Okay, this is a mic arm. It's not inexpensive. This one, uh, I think the company is Auray, A-U-R-A-Y. This one costs about $50. This is a professional mic arm. It has a professional 
uh, by professional, I mean XLR in this case. It has a cable running through it. Uh, so the cable is integrated with the arm. You cannot remove it. You don't need a mic arm, even this fancy. Okay. Uh, you, you don't need this and no mic arms to my knowledge come with integrated USB cables. We're only going to be recommending USB mics, but you will get mic arms. They look mostly like this without the cable. And what you do is you attach this part to your desk. So it clamps onto the side of your desk and then you hook up the mic to this end. Sometimes you can hook up a mic directly to that end with the right adapter. Other times you will need an adapter. Now this is another microphone, but just for the purposes of demonstration. I happen to have a mic arm just out of camera view, but you would connect this to this and then position it like so. All right. What the mic arm does is it keeps the microphone in the ideal position for use. There are bad positions, <laughs> there are good positions, and you want your microphone in an ideal position. You don't want to hold your microphone like this. That's This is not a handheld mic. And even if you have a handheld mic, you don't really want to hold it while you're podcasting because <coughs> excuse me, I have flu A in case anyone wonders, uh, you don't have to hold You don't need to hold a handheld mic when you're recording. Uh, you can also put that on an arm as well. No matter what kind of mic you have, you need to put it on an arm and an arm will allow it to essentially float in space. It frees up your hand. It keeps your microphone in an ideal position. You can move your hands around without worrying about the microphone. Uh, the mic arm, if it was a good one, would absorb some of the shops, shocks when you tap the desk. Your microphone might come with, you see this ring, looks like one of the rings of Saturn. Uh, this microphone has this uh, as an integrated piece. And so you can't mount this microphone without the shock mount. There's no way to take this microphone off the shock mount. But other mics, they can be removed from the shock mount. And I've just got this one in a shock mount that I uh, that came with this kit. And then you mount it to the microphone that way. This one, this one has a few options that maybe this one doesn't for mounting, but you want that uh, microphone to be held in an ideal position the entire time you're talking. And the only way to do that is with a mic arm. And so you might be thinking, man, you know, $20, it seems like a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. Spend $20, get a mic arm. If your microphone comes with a desktop stand, which this one does, by the way, what I want you to do is remove the microphone from the stand and throw the stand away. There are no good desktop stands that come with USB mics. Zero. They don't exist. And if you use the desktop stand, what's going to happen is that your microphone is going to be, you see, this is, this is actually far away from me right now. It's going to be way down here and it's going to sound like garbage. Let me see if I can simulate that. By just pushing away. Okay. It's going to sound probably about like this. And even though this is a good mic, I can, I know that this sounds like garbage. <laughs> so you don't, sorry about that. You don't want to do that. Remove it from the desktop stand. The microphone will come with a piece. I will bring this close to the, actually I'll use this mic. It'll come with a piece that looks like this, All right? This, this part right here. And you can usually, 
um, detach that. With this mic, it, it, the desktop stand, I could show it to you, but I've, I'd have to take it out of the box, and I, I've got it all boxed up because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send my other one off. So the desk stand, in this case, can be removed, has a little bit of little assembly like this, holds it into the stand. You can just remove this. It doesn't require any tools. Then you can take it and attach this piece to it and then you can put it on a mic arm so if you have a desktop stand uh, that comes with a microphone good for you remove it and throw it away never use that stand it's bad every time you want your microphone up here okay let's talk about mic placement so yes it has to be in the air near your mouth how near your mouth kind of depends on the microphone. It should never be further away than six inches. I don't care what kind of microphone it is. I use shotgun mics, which are kind of made to be used about 18 inches away. I use those close up because they sound better when they're close up. Pretty much every USB mic that we're going to talk about needs to be played about three to four inches away. No further than that. Um, if you get six inches away, that's still okay, but you're going to bring in a lot of room noise that you don't want. The closer you are to the microphone, the less room noise you're going to get. And room noise, I, I could talk about that for hours, but basically it's the stuff that, that makes your sound terrible. So you want to eliminate your room as much as possible. You're not going to do any kind of uh, acoustic treatment. I've got some acoustic treatment in this room. This room is big, tall ceilings. It doesn't matter. Uh, this laughs at, laughs at my acoustic treatment. So, um, yeah, in order to cut down on echoes and the kinds of sounds that you don't want from your room, you're going to have to be close to the mic. So no further than six inches away. Most of you don't have a ruler. So let me give you a couple of rules of thumb. One fist roughly three inches. Sorry about bumping the mic. About one fist away. If you want to be a little bit further, this is, this symbol is called a hang loose. Don't, don't stretch it for all it's worth. Just kind of keep it loose. About four inches away. So, uh, that's, that's kind of how you can tell how close you need to be to a microphone. You could get even closer and get a more intimate, deeper sound. That's called the proximity effect. You don't necessarily want to do a very long video getting a lot of proximity effect. It's very harsh and it's hard to listen to for a long time. So about three to four inches. One more thing about mic placement. You notice that the microphone is not directly in front of my face. Now, camera angles are tricky. So it's also not directly to the side. Let me use this pencil to see if I can illustrate. Okay, this is a pencil. Not a normal pencil, I know that. This is a pencil, I'm going to point it straight at the camera. I'm going to point it completely horizontal into the camera. Okay. I have it diagonal. The microphone is diagonal roughly at a 45 degree angle. That's how you want to speak into your microphone every time, every microphone. Doesn't depend, it, it doesn't matter what kind of microphone it is. Professional mic, amateur mic, a condenser mic, dynamic mic. This is the kind of placement that you want to have. Now, why is that? Why don't you just speak directly into the microphone? You can, but it's dangerous. What you will be doing is blowing air directly into the microphone. I'll, I'll demonstrate. You're not going to like me for it. Peas pop like this. Now you can hear that. Those are strong gusts of wind when you make a P sound or a T sound or a B sound. They're called plosives. When you speak directly into the microphone, you're blowing all of that air into the microphone. 
But if you angle it at about a 45 degree angle to your mouth, it's still directly at your mouth, it's going to pick up everything that you're saying. The air goes past the microphone and not into the microphone. So the P sounds and the B sounds and the T sounds, p -p -p, the plosives are much less when you handle your microphone like this. Now, sometimes microphones are so sensitive that even this won't get the job done. And then you'll have to put on some type of wind screen or pop filter. We can talk about that some other time. But if you just use good mic technique, and this is mic technique that we're talking about, you'll be just fine most of the time, and especially with this mic. Also, with this mic, this mic handles plosives very, very well. So, what have we learned? You need a decent mic. There's, there's no free way to do that. All right, and but you can, but you can still be cheap. All right, uh, not free, but cheap. And then you need a mic arm. Uh, you don't actually need a decent mic arm, though. After using it for a while, you're you're going to find reasons why you want a slightly better mic arm, mic arm. You can get them at every price point, so it's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, then you want the microphone to be roughly one fist away from your mouth, maybe one fist and a little. And then finally, you want the microphone to be at a 45 degree angle rather than straight on. All right. I think that's most of what you need to know. I am going to send a mic very much like this one. I, I liked this mic so much when I reviewed it, I bought another one. So this is the other one that I bought. And this is the one that I could get the quickest. Uh, the one I am giving away is, I call it bubblegum pink. It's nice. Uh, so I like it. Uh, someone is already going to be getting that microphone and I will be giving this microphone away as well. Uh, they are different microphones. They have different features. Everything that I said though, uh, is true for both of these microphones. Uh, anything else I say would be microphone dependent. If you find that this RGB light is distracting, you can just turn it off. Uh, you'll notice that I muted the mic. I turned off the lights. I've unmuted the mic. You know, it has, it has some very nice podcaster streamer friendly features that work very well. This mic does not have any of those features, but it sounds good. And, um, it most likely sounds better than any mic you've got, uh, right now. So uh, I think that's good for now. And if you feel like you need a microphone, like I said, this one is already packaged up. The other one I have, it's already packaged up and I will be sending that off to the lucky recipient soon. But if you need one, I will send you this one, which I also reviewed and decided not to return, but to give away because it is a good mic. And I do have another mic um, that I probably could bring myself to give away. In either case, you're going to have to buy your own mic arm and you're going to have to learn how to practice good mic technique. Your audio doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough because when I record it, I will run it through the various filters that I use to, to clean it up a little bit. But if you start off with a bad audio signal in the first place, there's nothing that I can do with it. There's nothing that anyone can do with it, really. So let's be good audio citizens, give the audience the best audio they can, and also make editing easy for me. I hope this helps. If you do have a good mic, these tips will help you uh, get a better sound and I will see you next time.